Hi everyone, welcome back to the lecture on water resource engineering. In this lecture, we will discuss about measurement of precipitation. So, let's start the session. The precipitation or rainfall is measured using rain gauges. Rain gauges are also known as ombrometer, pluvinometer, or hydrometer. I will repeat once again. Rain gauges are also known as ombrometer, pluvinometer, or hydrometer. This is an important question repeatedly asked in different new, uh, competitive exams. So please note it carefully. Okay. So uh, how this rainfall is measured? Usually, once the precipitation occurs, we will measure only the depth of rainfall which falls on a level surface without any losses. The loss of rainfall such as evaporation, percolation, infiltration, etc. without any, uh, with eliminating these losses, we will measure the depth of rainfall occur in centimeter or in millimeter. Okay. So the rain gauges are mainly classified into non-recording rain gauges and recording type rain gauges. In recording type rain gauges, there are three types. Weighing bucket rain gauge, tipping bucket rain gauge and floor type rain gauge. Moving on to non-recording type, the commonly used non-recording type rain gauge is Simon's rain gauge which was used in India till 1969. After that, we ourselves developed a standard rain gauge which is quite similar to recording, sorry, Simon's rain gauge. So after 1969, in India we commonly use standard rain gauges. Okay. Now let's see what are the criteria or what are the points to be carefully understand while selecting a rain gauge station. They are the site should be a level surface. The site should be in an open space. The site should be free from high winds. And the fourth one is the distance between the rain gauge and the nearest object should be at least two times the height of the object. Okay. About rain gauge station. Rain gauge station is the rain gauge of the rain gauge. That's why we have a rain gauge station. Rain gauge station is selected. We have a lot of points. Okay. It should be an open space. Open space is the buildings and trees. The reason is for buildings and trees are the rainfall free and the rain gauge section is on the way. And the rain gauge is the same as the ground is 1 meter, 2 meter height to the maximum ground. If you have a building or tree on the side of the ground, आ रेनफॉल तो हम लोग करेंगे वर्टिकल आइटम है ना हम लोग इतना तो विंड इंडेक्शन से जस्ट स्लाइटली इंक्लेंड है वो आटो फ्री आईटी रेंजेज लेकर काटते हैं ना पर वो भी शुड बी एन ओपन स्पेस विदाउट एन इंट्रोडक्शन इट शुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम हाई विंड तो हम करेंगे तो मालेरा मॉल में कौन ले � and the nearest object should be at least two times the height of the object. That's why we have a tree on it. If you have a tree on it, you can go to the side of the rain gauge. If you have a tree on it, you can go to the two times the distance of the rain gauge. If you have a tree on it, you can go to the tree on it. If you have a tree on it, you can go to the rain gauge in common height. Now, we have one rain gauge. We have a sign of rain gauge, we have a tree on it, we have a tree on it, we have a tree on it, we have a tree on it. Okay, first let's see non-recording type rain gauge, that is Simon's rain gauge. So, as the name indicates, non-recording type rain gauges does not record the rain gauge or rain data automatically, rather it just collects the rain volume. That is, in Simon's rain gauge, the rain volume or the rain precipitation is collected in this receiving bottle. And this water is collected and we will calculate the volume of water and we will divide it by the cross-sectional area of this bottle. Then we will get the depth of rainfall in centimeter or mm water. 
so this is the procedure for calculating the rainfall depth by sinus rain gauge now let's see what are the important parts and how the rainfall is collected inside a sinus rain gauge so in a sinus rain gauge the a concrete foundation on which the entire setup is installed the concrete foundation has a size of 60 cm by 60 cm by 60 cm and the bottle it has a receiving bottle over which a funnel is located and uh, it has an outer metal casing which is installed in this foundation so let's see the working when the rainfall occurs the rainfall will be collected by this receiving funnel and this receiving funnel is connected to the nozzle so uh, the top of the receiving bottle and through this funnel the rainwater will get collected inside the receiving bottle if the rainfall is very heavy we will measure this receiving bottle two or three times a day or not in a normal day we will be collecting this rainfall only once in a day that is 8:30 am in the morning so these are the main parts of a sinus rain gauge and of course the bottom of the casing has a dimension of 210 mm and top dimension is 127 mm and the height of rain gauge from the ground level to the top is 300 mm and the cap of the casing has 25 mm and 25 mm respectively and the casing metal casing is provided for this rain gauge is to protect the bottle and funnel from the external forces so this is the procedure and this is a working of sinus rain gauge uh, now let's see the advantage and disadvantage of sinus rain gauge the main advantage of sinus rain gauge is it is less costly because there is no sort of electronic equipment connected in this sinus rain gauge so that its operating come maintenance cost will be very less now let's see the disadvantages of sinus rain gauge the main disadvantage is one attender is needed for calculating the amount of water and then to calculate the depth of water on that particular day so a attender has to come every day to check this instrument and to collect the data and also the second disadvantage is we will not get automatic uh, recordings like intensity of rain depth of rain etc we have to manually calculate all these data so this is a common description or short description about sinus rain gauge or non recording type rain gauge